Hello and welcome to another Timeless Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a white, black and green or Amazon colored death and taxes style of deck, sometimes also referred to as hate bears, as we've got various two mana creatures that are good at punishing certain strategies, such as a voice of resurgence, which will force the opponent to mostly play at sorcery speed, otherwise will generate a large elemental token that scales with the number of creatures we control, and when voice dies we'll also get it, so it's pretty good in grindier matchups as well. And then a containment priest is mostly here to punish the self-mill strategy that tries to get all sorts of creatures back from the graveyard, which now will get exiled instead, and this can also be effective against a natural order out of the titan ramp deck, so we can maybe play this at instant speed to catch the opponent off guard and then exile whatever the opponent searched up. Then we also have four copies of Thalia, which is of course a staple of this style of deck, making all non-creature spells cost one more, which will mostly affect the opponent since we only have a handful of non-creature spells. And then Asper Sentinel is kind of the one mana variant, which will tax the opponent for non-creature spells equal to its power, and if they don't we get to draw a card. And then we can even increase the Sentinel's power with Luminarch Aspirant, putting additional plus one counters onto it, and this can also be a way to increase our damage output a little bit. And then we've got some hand disruption in the form of a deep cavern bat, which can take any non-land card from the opponent's hand for as long as we control the bat on a 1-1 flying lifelink, so it can also be helpful against the more aggressive decks. And then of course Orcish Bowmasters, a staple of this uh, timeless format, and of course we're going to play it as well, uh, good at answering opposing Bowmasters and other various one-toughness creatures. And Bowmasters is also quite good against our deck, since we've got quite a few one-toughness creatures between Bowmasters, Thalia, potentially Aspirin, Bat, and then Asper Sentinel as well, so that's why it's also important to have a Giver of Runes at 1 mana, a 1-2, survives Bowmasters, and then it can tap to give another creature we control protection from colorless or from the color of our choice until end of turn, so that can protect our other creatures from removal and basically force the opponent to take out our Giver of Runes first, and this can also be helpful when uh, creatures start attacking and blocking, as we can use protection to our advantage. And then a Deathrite Shaman with our various fetch lands also turns into a solid mana creature with more late game utility, gaining life and draining the opponent. And then we've got a few more ramp creatures with Avacyn's Pilgrim, making white mana since we don't need a ton of green, so prefer this over the other elves, and uh, that can also maybe give us a small mana boost. And then our non-creature spells, our four copies of Fatal Push, can easily enable Revolt with our fetch lands, and then a Soul Guide Lantern, more graveyard hate, and then it can also turn into a very nice card draw engine alongside our companion, Lurus, and that's the reason why we're only playing one and two mana creatures in this deck, otherwise there are some decent three mana options as well, but I think it's worth it to run the companion instead. And then our mana base has a few of these fast lands, and then mostly just basics, shock lands, and fetch lands to power up Deathrite, and to make sure we can maybe fetch our basics if facing Blood Moon. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, opponent also playing with Lurus, and we've got a fine hand, give our runes into either Bant or Bowmasters. And then Giver can protect our bait. A red black could be a burn deck for now, just a channeler, which I'm pretty happy to take out with the Bowmasters. Although, if they cast a turn to Arcanist, I might regret not sniping it. I guess with the Fatal Push, we're less concerned. So. We'll go for Bowmasters, opponent sees it coming, so it's not going to be a surprise. We'll leave Giver of Runes back on defense to protect Bowmasters, which could certainly matter if our opponent has more baubles they want to sacrifice. Inquisition now. Might go for the Bats or Fatal Push. Goes for another Bowmasters, so could mean that they have another Channeler in hand. Yep, there it is. So step one, play the bait, see what they're working with. See Ragavan, Unearth, which currently can get back Arcanist or Channeler. Thoughtseize could still be effective if we decide to play Deathrite. So yeah, Ragavan we don't care about at all. This is between Unearth and Thoughtseize. I guess the Unearth is more relevant. And 
and then if I just fatal push channeler now, opponent's not left with a whole lot. They may not even bother casting the thought seize. And next turn we can put Loris in hand. Probably should have left one creature back to block a dash Dragovan. It's gonna be a Croxa to make us discard instead. So now if they were to dash Ragavan, I can just block with the bats and give protection with Giver of Runes. But had they drawn a spot removal spell, they could have maybe punished us. Alright, so we don't want to put Loris in hands for as long as they have a Thought Seize. So I'll just go for Death Rites. And then... Probably just keep attacking. And then if they block, we can use Giver. So we are shields down for a turn. Opponent might be able to escape Croxa here. But now Deathrite can exile it. And a bat to take Alurus seems worthwhile too. And then we want to get rid of Croxa right away. And then our opponent's got nothing left. And that's enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Facing Lurus, we've got a keepable hand. Now I can't get Overgrown Tomb with a Flooded Strand. So we'll go for Temple Garden to get our green sorted. And then turn two. We'll see if we want a Bat or Thalia. Alright, points on the burn deck. So both Thalia and Bat are effective. I guess we prefer Thalia, and then next turn we can Bat plus another Giver. And our opponent's gonna be forced to take out Giver before they can answer Thalia. Yeah, I think the burn matchup is quite favorable for us. A lot of our creatures just line up quite well. I guess this doesn't matter. See what they're working with. Our opponent is on the Bowmaster's build, so that's pretty good in this matchup. So yeah, that's too bad. Can take one, but they'll still have another. So in that case, I may as well take a Searing Blood. Or take Bowmasters, and then if our opponent goes for Searing Blood on Thalia for some reason, we can still bat the second Bowmasters. Yeah, seeing double Bowmasters definitely tilts the game back in the opponent's favor a little bit. Right, opponent is going to Bowmasters after all. Going for Thalia. So now we do potentially get to Bat take Searing Blood and then can quite Fatal Push. Or we can play Voice which will block favorably, and then we've got push for Bowmasters, although we're not really in a hurry to answer it. So I guess we'll just play another bat now. Eidolon, I think we can outrace at this point. So Searing Blood is the most effective, since it answers my Giver of Runes while dealing extra damage. So they're just going to skewer Giver of Runes, in which case we'll give Pro Black. So they can't attack us this turn. 
All right, now it's a bit of a precarious situation if they find more removal for the bait. So the question is whether we go towards Lurus or play a Voice of Resurgence. I guess Lurus is pretty good if we draw land next turn. So we can hopefully get another Giver of Runes going. Opponent found a land. So they can put Lurus in hand. And they do go for Eidolon. Found a land, perfect. So Lurus plus Giver. As opposed to voice and cast a few pushes, I guess pushing Eidolon first. I think I like Lurus into Giver. We'll take a bit of damage off Eidolon, but we'll end up with a 3-2 lifelink. And then our opponent's also going to take damage off their own Eidolon. They drew a land. They're gonna go digging. See if they can top deck, let's say, another Bowmasters, take out bats. Then they have access to another Bowmasters. They're going for the Searing Blood to answer Lurus instead. Fair enough. So their opponent's at 5. Over at 8, can block the 1 ones, so just take 2. Alright, that was a decent turn for them. And now, attack with the bats. And then we probably end up pushing the Eidolon, although maybe it's actually to our advantage. It's a close call. If they do have a bump in the night, they can flash back, but even though it costs 6 mana, it's still a 1 mana card for Eidolon purposes, so it would deal them 2 damage. Yeah, I guess we just push. We have too many cards we want to cast, and they all trigger Eidolon. And then Thalia would slow down bump in the night. Opponent can, of course, go Lurus replay Eidolon, but at least Thalia will hold off Lurus so they can't gain any life. I don't think I wanted to push the Bowmasters before the Thalia attacks happened. This is a Interesting attack. I guess they want to get back Bowmasters with Lurus. Which makes some amount of sense. But then we just protect with Giver of Runes. Opponent just going face. And the Rombo Masters is pretty nice. So Bat can attack. Does Thalia attack? They would maybe just jump with Bow Masters so they can replay it. Yeah, I guess we could technically figure out a way to uh, enable Revolt on Fatal Push to deal with our Lurus. And then we're pretty far ahead. So we still have to watch out for Bump in the Night, but that's about it. And Thalia makes it cost 7. So yeah, I guess we'll just send the bat. Play Voice and keep up Bowmasters. With a protection from Giver, we could also prevent a, a lifelink from Lurus from uh, gaining them any life if we protect Voice, assuming Thalia is gone. So, yeah, once again, if they want a Bowmaster's face, that seems reasonable to me. The lifelink from Deep Cavern Bat is just keeping up. Opponents may 
be dead next turn if we attack all out and then just protect whatever Lurus blocks. And uh, yeah, that's game. Awesome. All right, we're on the play with a one lander with an Avacyn's Pilgrim. So I think it's still worth trying. And then I'll just get Temple Garden, even though if Pilgrim survives, I could maybe get by with Overgrown Tomb. And then hopefully we'll draw another land next turn. Alright, I guess uh, probably go for Thalia now. Windswept Heath getting a gate to Manorborn, so opponent on the green ramp deck. Which is a pretty tough matchup for us. Thalia, one of our better cards, admittedly. Want to find the bats if possible. And then we just want to amp up the pressure as much as possible. Containment Priest can help against Natural Order. So that's also relevant. For now, grow Sentinels, so we're more likely to draw off of it. And a Fierce Empath to get Primeval Titan, which they're not going to be able to cast next turn since they're missing the uh, cave to give them the mana for Castle. Deep Cavern Bat was a good draw, although there's a pretty decent chance that our opponent has a second Titan in hand. Either way, probably going to put Counter on Aspirant, attack all out, and then if they trade Empath for Pilgrim, at least we don't have to worry about Natural Order. Opponent jumping as opposed to trading. And yep, double Primeval Titan and a Natural Order, which was costing them 5 mana. So I need to top deck another bat. Although we will still get an attack in here, and then we can maybe start loading up counters onto our flyer. Oof, Grazer, actually a very relevant top deck here. So, now what? Next turn our opponent's casting Primeval Titan. They will be able to make zombies already. And then with Natural Order, they can get another one. Soul Guide Lantern not doing me too many favors here. But uh, let's say we put a counter on Deep Cavern Bats, attack all out. Opponent can soak up two damage, take seven, fall to four. Still gonna take me a few turns with a bat to get the job done with the Grazer now, but uh, yeah, I guess that's the way to go. Might still be able to get an attack in on the ground. Opponent can get double Field of the Dead, and then with the Fetch Land, make two more zombies. Goes for Radiant Fountain to gain two, also makes sense. So, another Bat is actually useful. Can take the Natural Order, and then we'll keep growing the current Bats. No point in attacking on the ground. Opponent may not want to jump with a Grazer because of Natural Order. But we're going to do so anyways. So now their plan is maybe to sank the Primeval Titan to get another one. Nope. Alright, so Bat takes a Natural Order, presumably. Another Titan. Well, I guess we take the Titan. So now they can sag Razor to get another Titan, but then they're left without any flying protection. 
So they probably keep the Greaser around, and then they need to try and pressure us with the Primeval Titan. But I think we trade, since our ground creatures aren't doing anything anyway. And then if we trade for Titan, they can only natural order Gracer to get another one. And then the Bats would get there. Although I'm not sure if we'll survive the zombie assault here. Got another Thalia, so even though First Striker is good against the zombies, we may as well trade. And then I guess they have a gate they can still activate. We get a large token from Voice. And we'll see if our opponent goes for Primeval Titan, or if they have a Titan of Industry, that would also make it hard for us to win. Uh -huh, Kami. So now they can just sacrifice Kami and get another Primeval Titan. At the very least. Nope, they have a Titan of Industry. So yeah, that's probably lights out now. They've got a big reach creature to block our flyers, and the zombies will take over. I guess we can just hang back and make a big lifelinker to maybe survive. I guess that's worth a shot. Keep the titan in the graveyard in case we can deathrite sham on it, but don't think this matters too much. And then play Thalia. Want to avoid taking damage here. Although with the fetch land our opponent can get three more zombies. So counter on Flyer versus counter on Aspirin so it can block a zombie. I guess counter on Aspirin. Pona did not fetch with Wooded Foothills yet. And wow, Crater Hoof Behemoth off the top. Well, Pona came to play. They definitely had some good top decks along the way. So did we with the Bats, but uh, was not good enough. GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and we do not have a one drop. So this hand may be a little too slow, but uh, I think it's still keepable. Inquisition, gonna have a look. At least all our cards are good. Thalia probably the most threatening if her opponent some sort of control or combo deck. And then we'll fetch for a black source. Thoughtseize can have a look once again. Takes voice, okay. So opponent planning to cast spells at instant speed. Yeah, these are both pretty good against blue control decks. Bowmaster's also pretty good against card draw, so if that's what we're up against, we may have drawn the right half of our deck. And then I probably hang on to Bowmasters. Could just cast it now, but then they might be able to push it before untapping. If they fetch for a tap land, I might uh, play Bowmasters now. That points black, green. Sure, I'll just flash this in now. So they might be on a Necro deck, which... Necro gets around Bowmasters, since they don't technically draw. Opponent's got their own Bowmasters. Killing the token. Was that intentional? For now, could put Lurus in hand, although against a discard-heavy deck that may not be optimal. So, I guess we can uh, fetch for Swamp. And 
then just clean up the opponent's stuff. Or they might be kind of baiting us into using all our removal when they have a more valuable creature they want to protect. Yeah, it's a tough call. Maybe I just pass a turn. And see what happens. And Liliana, that's fine. Got a plus. I'm tired of your secrets. So now we probably want to clean things up. Could still hang on to Fatal Push alongside a fetch lane to maybe answer a shield roots, but Liliana's gonna make us discard, so. I really don't have time for you. And then we can discard a lane next. Opponent discarded the one ring, which is not that great against the Bowmasters. And as we suspected, discard grabs Lurus. So, we'll see what they have left. A Demonic Tutor might go for a Shield Ritz, might go for Necro. And they're not going to plus Liliana. We'll thin out the deck a little bit. Alright, Deathrite could come in handy. A delay. Nothing more. And our shield roots, as we suspected. Alright, so we'll keep the fetch lands for a potential Fatal Push. Sentinel, not the best in the face of a Shield Rit, but... Uh, at least Deathrite's got a bit of fuel to gain life if needed. And now the One Ring, good combo with Shield Rit. Right, so we need to find another Fatal Push as soon as possible. Opponent will draw. Bowmaster triggers, but we can't go upstairs because of the one ring. So, let's go after Shieldred. And I think gaining life is going to be more important than anything else. Okay, Pat can have a look next turn, since right now they're protected. Unless we just want to get a, a lifelinker going. Don't think that's the case. Push deals with Aspirants. Opponent pays. But now we do have double Bowmasters to punish a one ring activation. opponent had a backup shield root and one ring. Well, if we are planning to draw another fatal push, I guess we take shield root. And our opponent can reset their burden counter. Giver of runes gives us a way to maybe attack past shield roots if we give pro black. But we might want to keep it to protect the deep cavern bat from removal. Not sure what the Dark Ritual 
is doing here unless they're planning to draw. Alright, I'm going for the one ring. They still kept the author ring, so they just wanted the protection, I guess. Get a bunch of Bowmaster triggers, which will now go after Shieldred since they're protected. And another Death Rite can fight over the graveyards. Well, at least now we have a large token that can start attacking. Not this turn, since they still have the ring protection, but next turn. Shield Road attacks. That's curious. Could imply that they drew another shield roots. I think I activate Giver. Possible they drew a removal spell and they're trying to bait it out here. And then I guess they get to kill bats, get a shield root back. Yep, another shield route. So I don't want to be the first one to activate Death Rite, because then they can Death Rite in response. So it's kind of a staring contest with Death Rite cancelling each other out. Now we do have a Deep Cavern Bat that can gain a bit of life back. And then I think I also attack with Voice, since that will leave behind a large token. And give her number two. And sure, I'll just play the courtyard. I don't think it matters. Right, so we'll respond. And then I guess they would get to use their death rites next turn. If they want to. And then we'll just alternate back and forth. Yeah, so they can't really activate the one ring with double bowmasters out. Since we would just take out Shieldred. But they kind of have to find some answer. Since at the moment we would be winning. Question is, what do we do if Shieldred attacks? Could maybe jump with a Sentinel so I don't have to activate Giver of Runes in case they top decked a removal spell. Alright, they're just gonna push Giver of Runes. In which case we can give her. Name Black. Maybe should have still targeted the author Giver of Runes in case I activate uh, the One Ring, but I kind of doubt it. Alright, take our turn. And yeah, we'll keep attacking with the same creatures. Bones at three. So next turn we could potentially go for an all-out attack. Yeah, I might have actually had lethal last turn if I just went for it. Especially with Giver of Runes giving pro black, we could sneak in the 7-7. And our opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck, and our hand is a one-lander, so that's a little sketchy, but with a death right, it's maybe still keepable, and we only really need two lands for this hand to function. 
So turn one, it's actually an interesting call. I think I like Sentinel. Punish a discard spell. If we already had a second land rolled up, I would have been maybe more in favor of Giver of Runes into Deep Cavern Bands. So the Sentinel already replaced itself. And our land is good. So, could take a look with Bats, maybe take away a Bowmasters before they can cast it. Our opponent on the burn deck, fair enough. Okay, so with that the case, taking Swiss Spear might be the way to go. That way, if they want to cast a Swiss Spear, they miss out on the Prowess trigger at least. And it's also a good enabler for Spectacle. So I imagine we'll see a burn spell, maybe end of turn on the bat. Even though that would draw with a Sentinel. So opponent just going for tap land. And yeah, we've got a pretty good hand for the matchup. Voice of Resurgence is difficult to get past with their creatures. We've got a bat for lifelink, sentinel to tax them, and our opponent's kind of playing the slow game here. And then double death right can gain life back as well. So giver plus death right. Opponent will have to take out giver before they can take out anything else. Unless they just want to shoot the bats, which would also make sense. And there's a Swiss spear. And a discharge. Okay. We'll take two. And then now we can fetch four planes. Definitely gonna play voice. Haven't decided on what else. Do want to try and get Lurus in hand as soon as possible just to get another lifelinker going. Alright, our opponent already concedes. I think we were probably going to end up just playing Deathrite and playing Lantern. And then we've got our Giver of Runes to protect Voice if needed. And then next turn with double Deathrite we've got a lot of mana to maybe work towards Lurus. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw and uh, facing the five color domain deck, presumably. Our hand's fine. For now, do we give her or death rights? Opponent might be holding a bolt to take out whatever we play first. Although if we play giver, we can protect the bats on turn two, which I think is worth it. So, in this matchup, I don't think we need to prioritize basic lands. So I want to get black-white. And we'll see if they've got a lightning bolt. Yep, looks like it. Unholy Heat instead, so it may not be the uh, domain deck after all. Just Jund. And now an Inquisition. Okay, so we're gonna trade resources back and forth. And then Lurus is gonna be pretty important for us as the dust settles. The Giver was a good draw. So I'll play Giver first so we can maybe protect the bats so it doesn't get sniped by Bowmasters. Another unholy heat. This time preferring death right. And a fatal push for giver. Okay. Find another death right. We'll just fetch a planes here, save ourselves a little bit of damage. And I see double fable and Minsk and Boo. So Probably no point in taking one Fable. I 
At least they are out of removal. Questing Druid wants to find lands, does not. Okay, that's pretty painful. And then now, do I go for Lurus? Or do we just uh, play a voice? Soul Guide can try and disrupt Delirium a little bit. Which means taking the Sorcery probably, keep the land for death right. Sure, we'll just go for voice here. And then I think I'm drawing with a Soul Guide Lantern, which I may as well do now, in case I pick up another land. Although I guess if we draw a uh, spell that our opponents can make us discards, I maybe should have waited, but we got rewarded. So with another untapped land, we could actually already cast Lurus. Then probably leave voice back to trade for the shaman, leave us with a large token. But our opponent might find removal for Lurus. Another push would also do it with a treasure from the shaman enabling a revolt. Tarmogoyf is quite large, although we can manage the size with our Soul Guide Lantern. And voice also pretty good at blocking stuff. And a questing druid. Alright, don't feel too bad about things. Now we probably want to play Giver to protect Lurus as soon as possible. And then... Probably not in a hurry to activate Deathrite. Could also Bowmasters the druids before it grows, which is also reasonable. How much do we care? I think I care more about protecting Lurus, so they only have one turn to top deck an answer. Put on double blocks. So, Tarmogoy first. Can we remove a card type from the graveyard? I guess Deathrite only removes instants and sorceries. There's multiple lanes and multiple creatures. And uh, can't exile the artifact here, so. Just trade for Tarmogoy. That's fine. Another Tarmogoyf, that's fine. If we get to keep Lurus, we should be able to take over. And we do. Awesome. So now... Voice versus Bowmasters. Maybe just shoot the Questing Druid, although if they have a one mana instant... I guess can't think of too many that they wouldn't have cast already. Just going for voice is maybe the safest play. Could also play another giver actually. Just to have even more protection. And then bat attacks. Deathrite can keep draining, so it's not gonna take too long to close out the game here. Yeah, both decks are kind of mid-rangey in nature, but uh, our companion just beats the opponent, basically. And yeah, our opponent's pretty dead here. Can activate Deathrite twice. I 
there may not be enough instants and sorceries to close out the game next turn. So I can put them to two life. If I use Giver, let's see. Opponent's got green and the red on defense. So if we activate Giver on red and on green, Allures can attack. And then we should get the job done. And I guess Bowmeisters can do the honors. Sweet. Okay, so yeah, getting to see some of the payoffs for running Loris as your companion here, as opposed to Gigantha. And uh, yeah, overall, this uh, Death and Taxes style deck is maybe not the best positioned deck in the meta. It's pretty good at punishing blue decks that want to cast a lot of instants and draw a lot of cards between Thalia, Bowmasters, Voice of Resurgence, and uh, we've got uh, Sentinel as well to punish all those non-creature spells. But uh, at the end of the day, because Bowmasters is so popular in the meta and already pushes some of those blue decks out, there's just not much left for this deck to prey on, and then you're going to end up facing some of the combo decks like Titan Ramp, which is a pretty bad matchup, and there's just too many matchups where if you don't draw specific answers like Containment Priest against a self-mill deck or maybe your Lantern to exile their graveyard, you're just going to be too far behind. So overall, I wouldn't recommend this as your starting point in Timeless, but if you happen to already have the cards, it's a fun variant of these mid-range decks to maybe try out. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.